Hello everyone, and welcome to my review on the ASUS EPC1001PX netbook. Now, this is one of ASUS's many netbooks, they have millions of them, literally. This particular model has a 10-inch inch display, the Intel Atom N450 processor, 1GB of DDR2 RAM, 160GB hard drive, and this particular model comes with the 6 cell battery and pre-installed with Windows 7. Now to make this review easy for you, I'm going to divide this review up into several sections. So you can just go to the section that you want to do, go watch and yeah. Now in this part of the video, we're going to look at the external features of the netbook. Now this. The book comes with a carbon fiber look. It's one of the Seuss's seashell design sort of thing, and it's a nice. It's not any. It's not glossy or anything. So this good-looking carbon fiber seashell thing won't attract any fingerprints or anything, which is good. Underneath, I don't know why you want to look under there, but I do. So anyway, on the left side, we got your battery cable cord thing, VGA, USB port, vent, SD card slot, and on the right hand side, well, there we got nothing really. Just that's where the speakers are. On the right hand side, we got a headphone, microphone jack. We got a Another USB port, Kensington lock, and that's your internet firewire. Don't know if it's a firewire, but it's where your internet thing in the bob plugs into. Now we're going to look inside the netbook over here. We have your 0.3 megapixel webcam, then you have your 10 inch display, and yes, that is an Aston Martin. It's a DB9. Anyway, the actual 10.1 inch display is a matte screen, and that's good, I suppose, because if it was a glossy screen, then it would just be all reflective everywhere, and you wouldn't be able to use it outdoors and such. Now, the screen actually looks quite bright. However, the thing you should note is that this is actually the screen on minimal brightness. I'll bring it up closer here. So, tripod, because my tripod's a bitch. But anyway, we'll turn the brightness up and see it's just become all brighter. But of course I'm going to put it back to minimum because that's how I like it. Now we'll have a look at the keyboard. It's a 95% full-sized keyboard and now usually some people complain that netbook keyboards are like cramped and such but this one isn't so cramped. I can easily type the way I do, blah, 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 I'll type in my, I'll just type in something. Yep, it's a nice, good keyboard to use. Um, uh, over here we have your trackpad. It's a multi-gesture trackpad thing. One finger uses to move the mouse around. And if you're in a web page, two fingers can be used to scroll the page up and down, up and down, up and down. And three fingers can be used to go back to the previous page or to the forward page on a web browser. May not, the three fingered one may not work all the time. Now as for the trackpad itself, it is reasonably good, but sometimes it can be a nuisance. It sometimes gets uncomfortable and we have to look at the trackpad button, the buttons now. It's a one whole button, one whole thing with the two buttons there, one there, one there. It does attract fingerprints and I do think it feels a little cheap, but whatever, it's not a big niggle for me. Now we have to look at build quality. Now this is something that can persuade some buyers. And I must say that the overall build quality on this netbook is rather good, if not excellent. There's no little... There isn't, there isn't that much flex on the screen, it's very minimal. There's no sort of creaking noises when the hinge goes up and down. 
feels tight as well. It doesn't feel loose or anything. There's no sort of creaking at all when I pick it up from a particular side. It doesn't flex as well. There is the only minor build quality complaint that I have of this netbook is the keyboard. It does flex. Oh, I'll move the camera in closer so you can see it. I don't think you can actually see it flex, but trust me, it is. I, and I'll move. Sorry for that. And as all, and the keyboard is also slightly raised on one end. It is on the other end. I don't think you can see it properly, this camera, but, well, trust me again, it is. And the power button, I think you can see this one, is high, the power button is higher on one end than it is on the other. Once again, these are just minor little problems. Now, we must test the performance of this netbook. This netbook is powered by the Intel Atom N. 450 processor coupled with 1 gigabytes of RAM and integrated graphics. Now the Intel Ra Atom range are not the fastest processors in the world. In fact, they're probably the s they are probably among the slowest computer consumer processors or whatever they are because they're pretty much made to be as efficient as possible. Or well, nevertheless, we have to see how long it takes to load up certain things. So to help me with that we have iPod. Now the first thing we're going to load up is Firefox. Now I'll start the timer when I click to start up, double click it, and I'll stop the timer when it fully loads up my home page, which is YouTube. Three, two, one, go. Five seconds. 10 seconds. Right, so the, my home page is fully loaded and it did that in about 12 seconds. Now, is that good or bad? Well, I don't know. It's adequate. Probably could be faster, but nevertheless. Now, we will see how long it takes to load up iTunes. Now, once again, we'll time it to see how long it takes. I can get a new timer started. This thing. Here we go. Right, and then we're off. Five seconds. Ten seconds. Fifteen seconds. So I was about. 18 seconds to load up iTunes. Yeah, so it isn't. That's probably bad. Or. Well, I don't know. But anyway, 18, approximately 18 seconds. I stopped the timer at about 19.82 seconds, but it did, however, finish loading before I was able to stop it. While we're here, we're gonna, we'll see how good the speakers are. Now, all of my iTunes library is full of. Final Fantasy soundtracks, so we'll find my... we'll go for this one. This music may not be to everyone's taste, but I like it. I played it about 106 times. Not that you need to know that, but anyway, the speaker quality is quite good. Well, I don't mind it anyway. We can always turn it up, you know, we'll see how loud it goes. And that's about as loud as it can get. And it's perfectly loud. The whole house could probably hear it. Well, maybe some people across the room and stuff, but probably not the whole house. But anyway, we'll go into... We'll see how... Right, so now we've entered the... Transition full screen mode thing. Let's see how well it does. And it's reasonably smooth, except for the white thing on the side. See, what a spectacular light show. Now we'll go into full screen mode. Katal F. See, well, that does. I said Katal F. See, it's all black, because the process is trying to work. 
And as you can see, it's going a lot slower now. The audio is shuddering and stuff. Okay, it's figured out now, and it's going smoother. But anyway, so for audio playback, the N450 it is mostly good. Sometimes though, it might shit itself for a second or two. But most of the time, it's more than adequate. It's fine. Now we are on YouTube to see how well it plays videos, the N450 chip. Now, the video I'm going to test this on is a movie trailer for a movie I want to see called Unstoppable. It's a train movie, but anyway, we're going to see how well it does in... Not 480p. We'll see how well it does in 360p. As you can see, it's perfectly it's smooth. Problem. I just don't like working at a damn daycare center. I don't like working at a retirement home, so. Oh, all right. This ain't training. In training, they just... See, perfectly back. smooth. Good sound as well. Married. Now we'll turn it up slightly to about 480p. See how well that does. As you can see, it's slightly... It was slightly less... It was slightly laggy at the start, but it's still perfectly fine. Kaboom! Ah, you didn't see that coming, did you? But anyway, we'll see how well it does in HD. 720p. And uh, the sound is still smooth, but as you can see, the picture, the video, it's laggy. Oh, you don't have to feel bad for it, though. My old desktop was just like this. It was a Pentium 4 machine with a Radeon 9600 graphics card. And it was hopeless of playing HD video. But anyway, that's... I can't go any... I can't go up to 1080p because this video doesn't have it, but I'm sure it would be worse than this. So we'll get out of that. On the plus side though, the N450 is still powerful enough to play Halo. This is the trial version and this is a somewhat crowded server, it's full. So in some parts it will slow down to about 8 or 7 or so frames a second. However, as I already said, this is a crowded server, so it'd probably be less, at times it'd probably be less than this. It's about 8, 9 now. And in more good news, the N450 Atom in this netbook is faster than a mobile Pentium 4 in this old laptop. So, if you're an owner of the Compact Evo 1000C, get an ASUS EPC-1001PX, because it's faster. Now, we have to look at one of the most important features of the netbook, which is battery life. Because battery life is what all of these netbooks are all about. They're about size, portability, and battery life. And this model has a 6 cell battery and it has a claimed battery life of about 9 hours. Now obviously you're never going to get the manufacturer's claimed battery life. I usually get about 4 to 5 hours under my normal usage. Now I'm always on the internet looking up stuff, watching YouTube and I'm always listening to music and stuff. Usually, if you're just on the internet looking at basic sites and stuff, you could probably get around about six to seven hours of battery life. Now, we'll see how much battery life I've got left. Now, we'll look up there, put the mouse over there. So we got about four hours and 25 minutes left of battery life at 68%. So, how much does this netbook cost? Well, I got this netbook back in August at Officeworks, see? And it cost me about $400. As you can see, that's it right there. $398, and it has all of the features I listed and stuff. However, if you do shop around at some other computer shops or maybe online, you can possibly get this for less. 
Now, now today a catalog came to my home, junk mail day, at Dick Smith, and they have this netbook for about two hundred, about three hundred dollars, as you can see. Now this is quite a good value, as you can see, e EPC one zero zero one PX. Now you can see for three hundred dollars for a netbook, that is pretty much good value. However, I looked up on the website, and the one and the Dick, the one at Dick Smith is the free cell battery version and not the six cell as shown here. So it pretty much means that battery life is going to be shorter, probably about four to five hours.